Welcome back to Keep It A Comic, I'm Goofy Rexy. You're about to see some crazy Easter eggs from Deadpool 1 because I decided to rewatch the first Deadpool film and I found some really great hidden details that I thought would be really fun for you to see before we watch a Deadpool or Wolverine movie coming up in July 26. So here are some of my favorite Easter eggs from Deadpool 1. So first off with the opening montage, we see a bunch of pictures of Ryan Reynolds in his Green Lantern costume. We also see his face in People's Magazine, Sexiest man alive and we see a coffee cup with the name rob l on it which is a reference to one of the creators of deadpool rob layfield he also has a cameo in the movie where way references him by name in weasel's bar and sister market school for wayward children which is a funny way of throwing shade at xavier's school for gifted youngsters in the opening shot of the movie after the cab scene we see deadpool on top of a railing with the salt and pepper song shoop playing on his tiny little radio and it turns out that shoop was released in 1993 the same year deadpool debuted in the comics now deadpool also starts by mocking you jackman's australian accent as well as complimenting his gonads when he says that he's got a nice pair of smooth criminals down under. Then he jumps off the railing saying maximum effort. Now fun fact here, Deadpool actually says the phrase maximum effort about four times in the entire movie. Once on the railing, once when he was trying to psych himself up to go talk to Vanessa at the strip club, and the last two times were when he forgot his guns with Dopender and when he tried to save Vanessa inside the oxygen tank. Now oddly enough maximum effort is the name of ryan's production company which he founded later on in 2018 i guess he really loved that phrase now during the epic fight scene aboard the highway at the beginning of the film we saw a bunch of street signs and if you know anything about street signs in movies you know it's usually a reference to something right now in the signs there are names such as necessia street and fabian road which are the other names pivotal in the creation and development of deadpool as a character we also also see the street sign historic oyakata which is a reference to a sumo wrestler that taught deadpool how to fight in the comics specifically in deadpool and widow wade team up in issue number one lastly we see the sign parker boulevard which i assume is a reference to spider-man here because wayne and peter have always had a somewhat contentious relationship in the comics so i guess this is a nod to that now during the first flashback i noticed that wade's fourth wall breaking ability wasn't present i mean sure he had a crazy crazy sense of humor with all sorts of pop culture references, but he didn't start breaking the fourth wall until after he'd survived the Weapon X program. The scene in which Wade orders a pizza from someone else's home and then starts being the pizza guy, yeah, see, that was actually ripped directly from the comics, except in the comics, he actually unalives the pizza boy. And speaking of the pizza, if you take a close look at the pizza box, you will see the name of the restaurant Wade orders from is Feige's Famous, which is a direct nod to Kevin Feige, of Marvel Studios. Now, in the scene, Wade steals Garvin's sunglasses, and when he's talking to the girls at the skating park, he throws away the glasses with a confused look on his face. Also, when he pulls his firearm at Garvin in the scene, the safety is actually on, meaning Wade never had any intention of taking anyone out, and that's a really good detail that I never noticed before. Now, when he bullies Jeremy, it's in a close-up shot where he speaks directly to his face to strike fear into his mind. And later on in the movie, he gets bullied in a very similar form by Ajax or Francis with the same close-up shot when he tells him that he's the only one who can cure his face. And we jump back here to the pizza scene. Wade wears a shirt with a picture of Bea Arthur, a reference to his love from her in the comics. I mean, Deadpool is such a super fan of the Golden Girls actress that he was lured into a trap because of her at one point. It's also speculated that Ryan Reynolds paid about $10,000 for the right to wear a shirt with her face on it as well. Now, in the bar scene, when Deadpool meets up with Weasel, they have a little talk about the Deadpool. That's the list of names that people are betting on. The names on the Deadpool are actual celebrity names. If you look closely, you'll see Kanye West, Bill Cosby, Vladimir Putin, Charlie Sheen, even Ryan Reynolds. There's TJ Miller, Miley Cyrus, and loads more. Leave it to a Deadpool film to always poke fun at popular celebrities. Now, in the scene where he plays a ski ball with Vanessa and uses the tickets to make a purchase, 
Vanessa, a red stuffed dog that looks like Deadpool is in the background. Now this here is a reference to Dogpool, an alternate version of Deadpool from another universe. Then in the scene where he meets Ajax and successfully hooks him to the roll with his sword, Wade opens his face and says he was bitten by a radioactive Sharpie. This is also from the comic, specifically Deadpool and Cable issue number two, where Deadpool says that he is the cross between Ryan Reynolds and Sharpay. Ironically, this is the first comic Ryan Reynolds ever reads, and he's been hooked on Deadpool ever since. Also, if you want to get hooked on amazing videos on comic book content gear, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell because we have videos like this coming out every single week. Now, after meeting Colossus, who promptly sends him flying toward a car, we immediately flash back to Deadpool's past where we see an action figure. It's the terrible version of Deadpool that we saw in the X-Men origin film. And in the background, we hear him say, this is my most prized possession. But it turns out he's talking about the Wham! album, Make It Big. Now, Ajax also comments later that he's going to sew Wade's mouth shut, which is a subtle reference to X-Men Origins Wolverine. Now, Deadpool makes a Canada joke when he tries to punch Colossus, but ends up breaking his hand. Now, this is really funny because both Wade Wilson and Ryan Reynolds are Canadian. When Deadpool punches Colossus in the nuts and then says this. <laughs> Poor wife. That joke just never gets old. And also he's talking about Kitty Pride, Colossus's love interest, whom he eventually marries in the comics. Now when Colossus handcuffs him, he says he's taking him to the professor and Deadpool asks, is it McAvoy or is it Storin? Obviously staying the confusion between the timelines and of course the fact that we had two different Professor X's in the Fox films. Now one of the jokes that I cannot believe the mark with the mouth made in a movie happened when he started to cut off his own arm due to being handcuffed by Colossus. Wade says, are you there? God, it's me, Margaret. Now, in that moment, blood splashes on Colossus's face. This is a reference to a book of the same name by Judy Bloom about a girl getting her first period. I just cannot believe that he would say something like that in this film. Now, when they cut to Deadpool in the Weapon X program and he's being rolled into a facility, he tells Agent Smith, don't make my suit green or animated. A clear reference to Green Lantern and him saying he's never doing it again. We also see a woman with bones pushing out of her neck. That might be Marrow from the comics. She's also a former Morlock and is a member of the X-Force. Now, during the scene where he decides to go looking for Ajax, he actually puts a, well, there's no easy way to say it, guys, a bunch of male genitalia stickers on Ajax's head, indicating that he is a dickhead. And then he says, this S word is going to have nuts in it. I also noticed that in the song played in the background during the montage of him going to look for Francis, they actually sing Captain Deadpool. No, just Deadpool. This is a callback to the previous scene when Deadpool is choosing his name and he says, Captain Deadpool. No, just, just Deadpool. Just Deadpool. Which I just thought was really funny. Now, it's customary that when Deadpool finishes a mission, he stabs a picture of his latest victim with a knife. Now, in the montage, Deadpool unalives a guy with a Zamboni, so his picture on the board was a hand drawn picture with the words Zamboni guy. Also, when we finally fast forward to the present, the scene accidentally cuts to Wade's um, pleasuring himself while making eye contact with a stuffed unicorn. And then when Wade goes home and has a discussion with Blind Al, we see him eventually carrying the that same stuff unicorn, a can of lotion and a book and leaving the room. I don't need to go any further, right? Now on their way to the strip club to meet Vanessa, we see a wad of cash in Weasel's breast pocket. And later on in the scene, we see him using the cash on strippers, indicating that he came fully prepared with the intention of splurging. Also, there's a Stanley cameo in this scene. Turns out he's the club announcer. And I honestly just really miss seeing Stanley in these cameos. Now, Wade also tells Weasel that he is constantly stalking Vanessa, which I think is really funny since he's basically beat the crap out of someone for stalking before. When we cut to the scene when Wade is all angry about Vanessa being kidnapped and he's talking to Weasel, in the background of the house we can see target photos similar to those found in gun range on the walls except that these have holes in them. This means that Wade is constantly firing guns when he's at home which is definitely unsurprising. Now, when Wade takes all the firearms into the house, he also adds you Jatman's Sexiest Man Alive magazine. The bag he uses is a Hello Kitty bag. This is crazy because Hello Kitty is the only account that the Deadpool movie's Twitter account follows on Twitter. Or I guess I should call it X. Now, this final fight happens in the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier. Although they could not say that's what it was because the X-Men was owned by Fox at the time, I guess Deadpool accurately predicted that the X-Men would eventually be a part of the MCU. 
Now, Angel does a superhero linen at this point, and it looks an awful a lot like the same linen that Iron Man did from the start expo in Iron Man 2 or every superhero movie ever. Now, Deadpool talks to a guy called Bob, who he worked with in Jacksonville. In the comics, Bob is an agent of Hydra and is also Deadpool's psychic. I also noticed that when Deadpool finished taking out all of Francis's men, he rearranges their bodies in a way that spells Francis, which is not a hidden detail, but if you pay close attention, Deadpool uses the head of one of the guys as a dot on the top of the eye, which I think is really messed up. Now, after defeating Ajax and ending his life, he tells Colossus to go be a really good big brother to someone. That's a reference to Colossus's younger sibling, Magic from the comics, who we also saw later on in the X-Men Mutants movie. Now, during the kissing scene with Vanessa, he plays the Wham song, Careless Whisper, which I think is a really good callback. Then he ends the movie by saying, I'm just your friendly neighborhood pool guy. This is another reference to Spider-Man who calls himself the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Lastly, the post credit scene is a reference to Ferris Bueller. You know, with the life moves, pretty fast speech, Deadpool wears the Ferris Bueller robe and makes fun of the audience for waiting for a teaser. And that's about it for my breakdown, guys, on Deadpool 1. Let me know if I missed any Easter eggs here. And if you want to see my breakdown for Deadpool 2, let me know in the comments as well. Also, be sure to check out our other video where I talk about how Deadpool 3 is going to cause incursions that will lead up to Secret Wars. See you on the next one. And thank you so much for kicking it with Keeping It Comic. Bye.